Welcome to our presentation. We thank you for taking the time to watch. I'm Tammy Sullivan. And I'm Cindy Moore. And we both are instructors at Asheville Buncombe Technical Community College, or AB Tech for short. And we are located in Asheville, North Carolina. The objectives for our presentation is to provide you with some lab ideas and then to share our resources. We're all familiar with the classic birthday problem. And what we like to do, our spin on it, is to poll the students. If you're in a traditional class, you can poll them as they're coming in. If you're in a virtual format, you have various options to poll. And we like to find out who shares birthday months first. Then we take this idea and we come up with the theoretical probability and we pull in concepts there as to the at least and complements and calculating the theoretical probability and comparing it to an observation that we had. After that, we like to pull up this TED Ed talk video. Imagine a group of people. How big do you think the group would have to be before there's more than a 50% chance that two people in the group have the same birthday? Assume for the sake of argument that there are no twins, that every birthday is equally likely, and ignore leap years. Take a moment to think about it. The answer may seem surprisingly low. In a group of 23 people, there is a 50.73% chance that two people will share the same birthday. But with 365 days in a year, how is it possible that you need such a small group to get even odds of a shared birthday? Why is our intuition so wrong? After we've watched the video, and we're respecting your time not to show all the video, you can see that they do a fabulous job of coming up with all the different topics that we do in probability to show the theoretical. Then we decided to poll the students and again collect the observation and find out if anyone in our class shares a date. This led us to thinking about a good simulation and using Excel to, and a random number generator to simulate. Here's a screenshot of our birthday simulation lab that a student did. So they repeatedly, each group represented a class and you can change the number to match the class that you have. And they went through and they looked at the number of days in a year and for the different classes, you can see that they highlighted where it randomly generated birthdays that were shared. Then based on this, we have the students calculate the experimental probability and then we pull them back together to then show them the theoretical probability and talk about the different probability concepts. And this is a great place to start to introduce the law of large numbers as well. Here's our directions and grading rubric for the simulation lab that we use. And you can modify it to match your needs in your class. Another activity that we like to do with our students is a game called The Last Banana. The last banana is a dice game, so we like to explain the rules and then have our students decide which player would they rather be. So you and your friend are on a deserted island with no hope of rescue. You have used all of your supplies and have only two dice and one banana remaining. So you decide to roll for the last banana. If the highest number on either die is one, two, three, or four, player one wins. If the highest number on either die is five or six, player two wins. So we give them the rules and we have students decide which player do they want to be. And then we um, can poll our students either live in a live class or using a polling app or the poll feature in Zoom um, to have students just decide which would they rather be. And then we discuss why they, why they made their choice. And then uh, we have students simulate the game. So in a live class, we would pair students up and give them actual die to roll. Or in a virtual class, you can use an online dice simulator. And we have a link to one that we like. Uh, you can Google free dice simulation and get lots of options. We like this one because it didn't have a lot of ads in it. And so I have the students play the game a number of times. I usually like 10 times. And we have them record the results. How many times did player one win? How many times did player two win? 
once everyone has played the game, we combine the data and look at our class data. And the table shows results from an actual class where player one won the game 41% of the time, player two won the game 59% of the time. So we talk about why these results may be surprising and if the class was surprised and, and why that might have happened. And so after we discuss that for a little bit, we watch a video. Again, it's a TED Ed video called The Last Banana. You and a fellow castaway are stranded on a desert island playing dice for the last banana. You've agreed on these rules. You'll roll two dice, and if the biggest number is one, two, three, or four, player one wins. If the biggest number is five or six, player two wins. Let's try twice more. Here, player one wins. And here, it's player two. So who do you want to be? At first glance, it may seem like player one has the advantage, since she'll win if any one of four numbers is the highest. But actually, player two has an approximately 56% chance of winning each match. One way to see that is to list all the possible combinations you could get by rolling two dice, and then count up the ones that each player wins. These are the possibilities for the yellow die. These are the possibilities for the blue die. Each cell in the chart shows a possible combination when you roll both dice. If you roll a four and then a five, we'll mark a player two victory in this cell. A three and a one gives player one a victory here. We really like the video and this activity because it pulls in a lot of the concepts that we teach about probability and either an introduction to statistics class or maybe even in a quantitative literacy class. We've also used it in a technical math class that introduces probability. And it brings in lots of ideas. It brings in law of large numbers. It brings in the multiplication rule. It brings in complements and sample space. So it just covers a lot of the same concepts that we use. This activity works really great, either as an introduction to probability or as a recap to probability, depending on what you need for your class. We also have a link here to a Desmos activity. One of our North Carolina colleagues, Luke Walsh, took this activity and turned it into something called the last taco. And we can see how he took this idea and turned it into a Desmos activity. And again, you can work through the activity on your own time, but you can use this to see how Luke turned this into an interactive activity. It has a dice simulator in it. It works through all the questions. And this works really great in a virtual environment as well. So just another option to take an in-class activity and turn it into something that's still meaningful in a virtual environment. If you have any questions, here's our contact information. And again, we'd like to thank you for your time and listening to our presentation. Thank you.